Okay. Hi, and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about finding balance. Finding balance between work life and family life. If you're new to this channel, on this channel we talk everything family, health, and lifestyle. So if you have not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you can know when new videos are available. So stay tuned. Uh, welcome back. We're going to be talking about finding balance, as I said before. Um, I started uh, working, you know, from the age of 16, and um, I never learned how to manage time properly. I just knew, you know, how to be task oriented. And so for me, um, growing up, this was a big challenge, even in my adult. Hood. <laughs> I was I had a very difficult time. Um, you know, I guess my husband would say I, I'm a workaholic. <laughs> um, not by choice. I just think that was something that was ingrained in me. Um, my dad was a very hard worker, and so was my mom. And um, growing up, my dad worked two jobs, and I think he had like an hour in between each job that he would come home between two and three, and then he'll go back from three to 11. And I remember if we wanted to see him, we'd have to wait up to like 11 o'clock at night, 11.30 when he gets home in order to, to see him. And so I thought that was what you do as an adult. You just work. And um, I love working. Um, I was always a career-driven person. And so as I... Um, got more mature and started you know um got married and started having a family i realized that time management and and finding balance was something that i needed to you know master um because i became so overwhelmed and stressed because i didn't know how to manage those two things and thankful he thankful to steve he <laughs> he for many years i am the chill one yes he was like Irie, you know, you would think, you know, he was from the islands, you know, because he just was like, let's just let it, let's flow with it. It's going to be all right, you know. And I was the type of person that if I had to call into work, I would, I would get sick. Meltdown, yeah. Yeah, I okay. would, I would get sick. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think it's very important, you know, to address this issue, you know, of, of finding, you know, balance between our work and our family life. For sure. And, you know, managing that, you know, especially with the pressures that we have in society that says, you know, you've got to produce, you've got to be, you know, uh, this person driving this car with this house and, you know, having your family at this level. Um, there's this societal pressure to, you know, keep you performing at a level that sometimes isn't healthy. You know, we, we get really caught up in, um, you know, the outward performance, the outward look, you know. And the reality is life demands us sometimes to just be, you know, working all the time in order for us to pay our bills. Things are getting more expensive. As you have children, you realize that, you know, they're expensive. And yes, it requires you to have a certain lifestyle to make sure that they get the best education so they get the best out of life and they get the best opportunity. And, you know, we want them to have a better opportunity than we have yeah. so that they don't have to go through some of the struggles. But it goes know, back to, to, yeah, for sure. And it goes back to how do you balance those two? Because obviously you have to work, you have to do what you got to do. You have to, you know, um, um, be good at what you do as well. But... Um, you know, at the, the, the cost of what, you know, sometimes we trade off the experiences that we have with our family, the experiences that we have with our friends in order to, you know, get an extra uh, day at the, the office. And at the end of the day, you know, where's that balance taking place? And where are you showing, um, you know, where your treasure is? You know, are you investing all your time at work only to realize, you know, like that movie, um, Click, you've missed the experience with your family, you've missed the experience with your friends. You, you don't have any stories to tell. Um, so how do you get those two things there? How do you enjoy your work environment, find balance there, be productive and great at what you do, but then also find that time to disconnect, especially in our, you know, current situation with COVID, 
and uh, being connected so often, um, we are you know learning again how to disconnect uh, in order to reconnect to family. And as crazy as some people feel it is, you know, to be home and all this other stuff. It's probably a blessing to it, both it, families, it, it right? It probably is. It's an opportunity to get to learn about each other and talk with each other and answer questions that may have, um, you know, gone unanswered mm -hmm. due to the fact that you're busy all the time. You don't get those conversations. And I think it forces you to see some things that you were, you know, probably blinded to or just wasn't paying attention or weren't being present for you know prior to covid but now that you're kind of forced to being home you have to face it you have to prioritize it and and deal with it and that might cause some tension you know for some families but it's something that's worth working through because at the end of this experience i think most families really would come out you know stronger or better for it and it, it's that going back to what you said earlier, you know, about modeling to your kids, you know, uh, do you want them to uh, experience you only through, you know, a scheduled frame or, you know, only through the the um, the text message or the, the, the Zoom call? Or do you want to actually be there present with them? You know, mm -hmm. as a dad, you know, there's always that. Um, pressure, societal pressure to be, you know, the one that's out there breadwinning and doing and doing and doing. And, you know, one of the stresses for us as fathers is, you know, um, we don't have um, the opportunity to, to sit at home and be a part of that experience and see the first steps and do all those other things. Because when, you know, in our society here in the United States, anyway, uh, when mom is home, mm -hmm. we are required to go right back to work. And, you know, watching those things, that was that was heartbreaking, you know, watching uh, the first steps and things like that only through a camera and not yeah. being able to be there. And, you know, contrary to what some people might believe, fathers want to be just as involved and just a part of those experiences. And a lot of times they, they miss out on them. And, you know, this society also calls for women to have to work, you know, in order for us to survive and to, you know, take care of our family and um, provide, like I said, a better future for our children. And so moms take on a lot of roles. And usually, you know, when dad worked, mom would keep home life balance and also keep the kids in line. But now when mom working, you know, things tend to sometimes fall apart because mom's overworked, mom's stressed, dad's stressed, and, and kids are, are stressed. And so I think it's very good that we, we stay mindful, you know, of the importance of finding balance. And I know last week I shared, you know, that story of my um, near death experience while I was pregnant. and. You know, I mentioned that they couldn't really figure out what was going on, but I think a big part of it, and, and my husband could allude to this too, because he was telling me prior to this incident happened that I was very much overstressed, that I was pushing myself too much. I was having a difficult pregnancy, number one. Number two, my um, I was having some family issues with a family member who was very ill that I was helping out with. And then I was working as a nurse practitioner um, and working long hours. Sometimes I wouldn't come home till like eight o'clock at night because I worked an hour away from home. And that created some you know stressors for us uh, because I would leave from seven o'clock in the morning and I wouldn't be coming home till eight, nine o'clock at night. So dad has to go to work, Steve has to go to work and come back home and deal with the kids and do homework and cook dinner. And by the time I come home, I am exhausted. And they'd be like, mommy, mommy, mommy. And I'm like, I don't have the time. I'm so tired. I, I don't have the energy. I was so spent. I didn't have anything for to give, any more to give to anyone. And there were days when I would be driving home from work and I would just be crying because I felt like I didn't do enough because I left so much work lab work you know lab to review um uh, you know consult referrals from work and you know different phone calls to follow up on and uh, about test results etc i didn't finish that but yet i'm coming home and i i wasn't there to prepare dinner i wasn't there to hear their story from the day i wasn't there to to um you know tuck them into bed you know i i missed out so much i just felt like a failure plus dealing with the whole pregnancy and the whole stress of, of being pregnant i i just feel exhausted I agree. And, you know, when we when we look at, um, you know, dealing with and coping with those stressors, um, a lot of times the things that we do to to cope, um, you know, because we're not used to dealing with stress, I think in our society, we tend to look at stress as a weakness um, and, and look at our, you know, inability to deal with it as a weakness. Um, what ends up happening is we either bottle it up and it, and it builds or uh, we lash it out 
and instead of it being you know something to be an identifier for us um, you know psychologically mentally to say you know I'm taking on too much um, I need to reassess where I'm at you know uh, rearrange things to make sure that um, I get the best out of uh, the experience that I'm trying to go for so you know and again like we were saying before modeling that to our kids because uh, for many of us we haven't been modeled well to we've been you know in situations where we've been told again you you have to produce you have to perform mm -hmm. and um, you enter into adulthood thinking that you know the only way that you prove your adulthood is um, you know through additional stressors and adding stress to your life and the reality is when you come from a family that doesn't have much and and all they they had to work and, and work hard in order to provide for you it, it, you know that kind of trickles down you just feel like that's what you have to do and and really and truly that's what we have to do to provide for our family but we have to find that balance because we are giving up something you know somebody would say where your your time is that's where your your love is or your joy is what you give your time to that's where your heart is and if you add up all the hours you give to your job you might think that's where your heart is but your heart is really at home but you have to work in order to provide and and to make home you know a safe environment and a functional environment for your family so how do we balance the two i mean i think we should give them you know as we get ready to wrap up like a few things to you know that we've learned yeah to help um you know balance and find balance uh, for me um you know one of the big things was learning how uh to say no um <laughs> because i like to if you ask me <laughs> okay sure uh not realizing i have like 40 different things to do for that same day um and then you know coming up to um, that experience and realizing, oh crap, I have 40 things to do today. <laughs> um, you know, the day before I am completely and entirely stressed out because, um, you know, I said yes to too many things. So learning how to say no and, and being okay with that, that, you know, you're a human being and it's okay to say no to certain things at certain times or, you know, schedule better in my case so that you have some time to get it done. And that's how we kind of help each other. Cause I remember you were the yes guy you know, earlier on in the relationship and you just wanted to do, do, do because you love to do it too and you were good at it. Uh, when people would ask him to do stuff, whether it's with church or with school or just helping a neighbor out, he loves to help people and you know, that's one of his strengths. And with that, he didn't know how to say no. And you know, I would say to him, you can say no, you know, like you having too much on your plate. And um, so I was able to help him with that, but you know, me, <laughs> I, I didn't know how to to take care of myself. I lack self-care. And and he had to help me with that. You know, I would just go, go, go like a Duracell battery until I was completely wiped out. And I was such a, I'm, and I'm still am, so I'm still working on this. I'm a focused person. So when there's a task ahead, it's easy for me to forget the other people around me or the other things that are going on around me. And, you know, I had to learn how to um, to slow down and to think of my own well-being, my own health. You know, am I okay? Am I taking care of me? When was the last time I stopped and just like get my nails done or just do something for me or go spend some time with a friend or, you know, just unwind instead of always feeling like I have to go, go, go and do, do, do. And um, I found that once I I learned how to, to balance, um, work and self-care I, I had to learn how this to to take my paid time off you know there was something you always tell me you have those pto time you know take a day off i had to learn that when i was sick it's okay to call out you know you do have sick days um you don't have to feel stressed about you know taking that time and then vacation you know it's important that mm -hmm. relaxation time to get away with family to unwind and then not go on vacation and still think about the job or what's going on just completely clear your mind and think about you and how to take care of you that was something that you know steve was able to help me to work through and once i figured out the art of self-care it was it was so mind-blowing because like i said nobody taught me that nobody taught me the importance of that and um and the mini vacation it's not it's not you know you don't have to book a trip to cancun every weekend but <laughs> you know <laughs> i know <laughs> I wish. 
<laughs> but, um, you know, taking the many moments in, within your day, you know, sometimes it's, it's the small, you know, few moments that you get where uh, there's a quiet in the house, um, you know, the kids are asleep or, you know, you have a moment to do something that you enjoy doing. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a group thing. It could be just a few minutes that you get to yourself. You know, I love my gaming and my, my technology and I will lose myself for an hour in that just to, you know, um, you know, get myself reset and reconnected and then then I'm ready to give to others, you know, as a pilot, um, you know, if you've ever been flying before, uh, they'll tell you before you uh, help the kid sitting next to you, if the oxygen tank pops down, help yourself. And there's a reason why, because if I'm trying, struggling to help the kid put the oxygen on them, I'm losing oxygen, I'm dying. And the probability is I'm going to die before I get the oxygen mask on the kid. So guess what? We both go down. So a lot of times we, we feel selfish by taking the moment to, um, you know, take a moment to breathe and get ourselves together. But without that, you then lash out on your kids. You then lash out on those around you that you love mm -hmm. and you don't get the experience that you really want to have. So. And I think one of the big things that we both struggle with, you know, as parents and earlier on and even now is that we... We weren't the type of parents who loved to like, um, you know, <laughs> ask people to watch our kids so that we could take some time off. I think there was a sense of guilt there. And um, we had, you know, godparents, we even have grandparents, and we just always love to have our kids around us. And we had to learn how to take some time off. And it's okay. Once they're in a safe environment, they're going to be okay. So that we could have some, you know, free time. Sometimes it's just like, you know, letting them go by the grandparents. So then I could have a binge movie day and he could just play video game all day. We're not thinking about the kids. We're just doing stuff that we like. Or we can go and rent a hotel for a weekend and just spend some time with each other. Um, so it's, it's, it's finding out those times, mapping out those times that um, you could find to rejuvenate yourself. Um, to de-stress, to whether you want to meditate and contemplate and, and set new goals, new aspirations, and to just, you know, um, center yourself and um, find peace within your environment so that you can fill your cup back up so that there is more to give, uh, not only to your family uh, or, or to your spouse or to your children, but to, to others. And you've told me how many times, uh, you know, this helps with the medical component of it, not just the mental, but, mm -hmm. you know, lowering, uh, what is it, your cort cortisol? Cortisol level, yes. Mm -hmm. Because when we're stressed, you know, uh, we produce more cortisol. Um, our body is constantly like in a fight or flight, you know, um, situation. We're in chronic, a chronic stress state. And that causes us to um, that can cause your blood pressure to raise it can cause an increased anxiety a level it can also uh, create an environment for depression um, and the increased cortisol level can you know cause you over time to have you know elevated cholesterol level and predispose you for diseases like diabetes and so stress if not managed and time management if not prioritized can lead to a lot of health issues and like I said, when I got sick during my pregnancy, I really think I was overstressing myself. And even after I was hospitalized for five days, and my husband said to me, maybe you should just let the doctor put you on bed rest because you're so stressed in this heart you know, issue that you have. You don't know if that will happen again. You don't want to jeopardize your health and the baby. I said, no, I have to get back. I had those patients who are depending on me and, and they have my schedule pre-planned. I have all these patients later. I cannot, you know, take off of work. So I, I did, I was put on bed rest for three weeks and then I went back to work. Uh, but that was short lived because my body was under so much stress. I ended up having to go out, you know, again, three weeks, you know, b before my, 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 my due date. Um, but once again, that was just that innate nature in me to just work, 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 that even when I was so sick, I felt like I had to do it. Um, and of course, you know, against the bidding of my husband, he was telling me, you know, you need to stay home and be on bed rest so that you and the baby could be okay. Take a snow day. <laughs> yeah, take a snow day. So um, we just want to encourage you to, um, you know, take a moment to reevaluate your, your family life or if you're a single person, just your life in general, um, because especially when you're single and you don't have the, you know, extra responsibility of a child or whatever, you tend to just throw yourself into work 
And that self-care piece is so important um, for everyone. And that ability to say no mm -hmm. is so important uh, in order for you to regroup, to recenter, to de-stress, and to find peace and to fill your cup back up so that you can have more to give to others. So I hope you find this helpful. I, I know that we're going through stressful time now with COVID. And I know that a lot of you have the opportunity to spend more time together with your children or with your spouse if you're working from home. I want you to think of it as a blessing, even though there might be underlying issues and things that you're working through, because if you were working, you wouldn't be addressing it. <laughs> you might be sweeping it under the rug. Um, staying together can bring some tension, but staying together also helps you to see what's really important, you know, which is your family and prioritizing family, prioritizing your health, prioritizing your spiritual, physical and emotional health is really, really important in order for you to be able to be healthy and functional and, um, you know, model this balance for your children. So we just wanted to remind you, you know, as we recap, you know, take some time to uh, make sure that you say no when, when there's too much on your plate. Uh, take time to spend time investing in yourself, whether it be taking a run or, you know, playing a video game or spending time just laughing. Uh, take time for yourself. It's important. TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> That's his uh, new thing. And then, and, you know, as you uh, spend that time, uh, spending time growing, uh, you want to make sure that you are, for those of you who are parents, uh, taking the time out to model uh, a healthy um, time management for your kids. So, you know, our motto uh, has always been to take time. It's the DIG acronym that we use. So. Discover yourself, mm -hmm. impact others, and grow daily. Grow daily, yes. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for joining us. And if you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so that you can know when new videos are available. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video.